the Pokeball, a Pokemon trainer's greatest tool in the quest to catch them all. Did you ever grow tired of running out of balls when you come across one of your most desired mons? In today's video, I aim to change all that by building a state-of-the-art Pokeball facility using the Create mod to automate an infinite amount of balls. Let me show you how it works. So right now, I am in a backup of the Battlecraft server. And it's a pretty old backup. There's things missing like my factory over in that corner there. But I have been working hard off camera on a Pokeball factory. And this is something that I'm going to build in this episode here over in Survival. Well, with the use of a schematic cannon, that is. Now, let me talk to you about how this completely confusing machine works. Okay, so first of all, we needed to get our hands on the different types of metals. So we needed copper, iron, and gold. And of course, to get all that, the easiest thing to do is to make a tough farm. So if we look at the tough recipe here, crushing, you get all the nuggets here. There's a 10% chance and you need quite a lot of different nuggets. So we needed to make a pretty big tough farm. So here I have a cobblestone farm, which is wonderful, working away. See the drills go in and makes a cobblestone. The cobblestone gets spat out onto these conveyors here. Half of it gets transported into this vault here. And then half of it goes into this basin here filled with lava, which is hooked up to this lava farm. Now that gets compressed down into deep slate. And then we've got a limestone farm here. So we've got the honey and we've got lava and it looks exactly the same as a cobblestone generator, except this makes limestone. That gets transported over to this section here, spat along these item drains into this basin, which is mixed with the cobblestone that comes out of this vault here. That then gets converted into calcite, which goes into this item vault over here, which is hooked up to this threshold switch. So when this gets filled up with calcite, this will turn off the limestone generator. This calcite and the deep slate in this item vault here will get spat out into this basin here. And then that gets compacted into this item drawer here, this draw access point. And that goes down to this section over here, which gets converted into tough. And as you see, the tough farm is growing. Once we hit 16, this will shoot out into the crushing wheels. Bang, as you can see. And then the crushing wheels crush all this, get spat out into all the different nuggets and flint, and we'll get transported over to these compacting drawers over here, which is wonderful. That's how we get all the metal we need and all the different ingots we need for all the farms over here. Now that's not the only thing we need. We need more than just the ingots. We need the apricorns. So we need a farm for the apricorns and that's what this gantry shaft system is in place for here. So here we have three lines of apricorn leaves. We have different apricorns growing on these leaves. We've got black and yellow on this side. We've got red and blue on this side and we've just got red up this side. We've got those colors because we're making pokeballs, great balls and ultra balls with this farm. So that's one line for each different pokeball, which means we should get similar amounts of pokeballs balls as you can see this has been running for a little bit i mean this one is a bit slower the great balls are a bit slower but we probably don't need too many great balls we're probably going to use a lot more ultra balls than anything else and this gantry shaft system is on a timer it's powered here by the farm over there this all gets powered through comes up to the sequence gear shift here once it, this is powered it gets sent 30 meters forwards delayed for 10 ticks and then sent 35 meters back. It, this can actually change to 30 meters, this is fine. Now this is on a 10 minute timer. So when this redstone link gets powered, it, after 10 minutes, this redstone pulse repeater will kick off and power the sequence gear shift. And that gets a power from this redstone contact here. So once the gantry shaft has gone all the way to the end and then come back, this redstone contact gets powered and then it sends a signal from this redstone link to that one, which then tells it after 10 minutes, do your thing. All the apricorns that get harvested by these deployers here fall down onto these belts and get taken into these access points here and the drawers carry on up, up to this section here and they get transported into these drawers over here. We've got a little storage of black ones for some reason and and also we get the sprouts come up into these storage boxes here just because otherwise it backs the system up and it's not very fun so why don't i go and build this in survival fun
Well, that didn't take too long, did it? But it actually took me a little while to get all the materials in survival because some silly sausage decided to make this out of andesite casing. Yeah, I won't be doing that again anytime soon. Now, I did make a few changes to this farm and I forgot we had a data pack on the server, which wasn't in my backup, uh, for golden sheets to be used instead of just golden ingots for the ultra balls. So I just put this mechanical press here and when it spits out a golden ingot, it just makes it into a golden sheet straight away and we just changed the filter on there. That was pretty dang easy. And if I head over to the limestone generator, which seems to have been stopped. This always stops in a weird place and breaks a lot. Same as the cobblestone generator. Yeah, I removed the the threshold switch from this bolt here and I moved it over to the drawer. So now we've got a drawer here instead for the limestone. Um, just because this was just, yeah, creating a lot of lag and it was not working properly. Uh, yeah, are we good? I'm going to move that up to, up to there. That's cool. And this can keep going as well. There we are. Look at that. And the whole farm stopped for some reason. Ah, oh, why? This is silly. This is a problem that I'm also having is that uh, the mobs die on, on this because clink clanks spawn everywhere and they block the system up. We get loads of drops in here and yeah, the Pokemon are notorious for, for blocking my system up and it's not fun. I don't enjoy it, but I'm not too upset about that. I mean, we're getting free balls. We're getting unlimited power. I mean, unlimited Pokeballs, and that can't be a bad thing. Now, all I need to do is put a build around it, and I have no idea what I'm going to do with it. Now, it needs to be in keeping with the factories I've got here. We've used a variation of different bricks from the Create Deco mod, and then we've just used a load of bricks from normal Minecraft over there. So I'm thinking we look at another set of bricks for that factory there. And we do have dusk bricks. What's that? Uh, we need scorchia. And that means getting a load of scoria, which is a load of soul sand cooked up. Yeah, I think we need to use dusk bricks for my factory. And that means getting a load of soul sand. Now I spent a little bit of time on stream making up the foundation of my factory here. And I finished this off camera because I'm not very good at building off the fly at the moment, especially with a replay running. Um, I'm trying not to build so much from uh, from schematics and stuff unless it's really necessary, like this factory here, which I built beforehand in Creative. The, the factory looks really good, and of course, we did give it a name. And there's only one company in the world of Pokemon that builds Pokeballs. Welcome to Silphco. That's right, Silphco now has their own Pokeball factory on the Battlecraft server, giving us all the Pokeballs that we could ever wish for. And we could expand this over time. We could have Silphco point A, and then we could somewhere else have Silphco point B, making different types of Pokeballs, but using the same basic layout as this factory, just to make a different variety of balls because there are so many. And they're all pretty easy to make, except when you start getting up to kind of a uh, quick ball level is brass. So that means making a brass factory, which is doable with this setup now. We've also got things like the beast ball, which is, yeah, not farmable, I'm afraid, because of echo shards and diamonds. And then master balls, which definitely isn't farmable because you need netherite ingots. And we don't have a way of making netherite ingots. There's just no chance. Not a chance. The only other thing we could do is probably look at making some ancient Pokeballs. I've tried in in uh, in single player, in creative, and I can't make a good enough farm for the tumble stones. I just can't do it. But I might give it another go and see if I can do it. I can't promise anything. I'm going to try. Now, my plans for this area are changing. There was going to be a city seriously Zubat this was going to be a city and it's now not going to be a city so we may remove some buildings we may remove these buildings here 
in, in lieu for another factory. But uh, I think we might just build a couple of other factories in here. And we're going to be mainly focusing on building farms with the Create mod and Cobblemon in mind. Because I love the Create mod at the moment. I can't get enough of it. But for now, I think the episode has dragged on long enough. It's taken me a long time in real life to get this farm sorted and built up for you. Because I've got a few things going on in, in, in the real world, not the Minecraft world. And uh, yeah, it's taken up a bit of my time. But welcome to Silvco. I can't wait to show you my plans for the future of this, this series. When we build some more factories and get all the goodies for the, for the Cobblemons. Yeah. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.